Hey guys, and welcome to an epic scrap between myself, a rubber duck of war, in the recent Clan War Cup tournament up against the might of Houseplant, representing RTK, and I'll be representing DBD, also Clan Hello, which is kind of a mercenary clan of different people, including a lot of the DBD members, and this was in a big team event. So, you know what, normally I tend to bring quite meme builds recently, try out new units and try to get unique stuff to work, but today I was representing a team, so I thought, you know what, we're going to go super super try hard meta, bring the normal stuff that everyone takes and is very good against the opposition army and try our hardest to crush the souls of our opponent. And to try that today, of course, we have gone with our faction we are definitely best at, which is the lizard men. So for our army, we do have some red crested skinkies mixed in with basic skinks on this left hand flank, going very wide in general, some source in the center for a bit more punch and meat to our build, able to chew through a lot of state troops. And on the right hand side, we have even more skink cohorts and more red crested skinks. Now the main punch to our entire build though is in the form of stegodons. For the forces of the Empire, they have a few good tools to take down Stegodons, but for the most part, when Empire come up against Lizardman nowadays, they don't bring Karl Franz, they don't bring Marcus Wolfhart, they bring Volkmar the Grim. Now, the reason you bring Volkmar the Grim is he can kill all the infantry, then all you have to do is protect a couple of units of handgunners to kill the big targets, such as Krokgar and Cold One or Horned One Riders, and you're absolutely golden. But there is a big problem for Volkmar the Grim. He has garbage melee attack and melee defense stats, made up for, of course, with a load of other wonderful stats and abilities, but... The Stegodonts, for the most part, have relatively low melee attack themselves and not the best melee defense, but that is counteracted by the fact Volkmar doesn't have the best, so Stegodons are a perfect answer to him. So we have two today. We have the Thunderous one, the Regiment Renown on the right-hand side, as well as Lord Mazda Mundi coming in with Net of Amentok, Curse the Midnight Wind, Apotheosis, as well as all his banishments and shields as usual. And he is right on the back, of course, of the true king of all Lastria. So let's give him a little neck scratch, the mighty Zlak. Up in the skies to help protect these guys, we do have a Kowatl here, which does come in with a couple of nice bound abilities, but more importantly, it's going to be shielding Lord Mastermundi and the Thunderous One until we're close to the enemy lines. Now, as for my opponent, he has gone very competitive as well, as you'd expect. A load of spearmen and swordsmen dotted all the way through the front line, including Sigma Suns, I believe they're uh, lurking somewhere in here. Unless I'm mistaken, maybe we don't have them. Maybe it is just the basic and more cheap and cheerful troops. We have some Halberdiers in the back to help support a load of gunners, so going very wide here. Halberdiers on protection duty as we have one, two, three units of handgunners in the central pocket here to bring the pain to me and one cannon just to entice in my forces and demand that I rush forward to try to shut it down as quickly as possible. Leading the army, of course, is going to be Volkmar the Grim. Definitely the most competitive pick here, though Karl Franz does also have a relatively nice niche. He just kind of gets picked apart by blow darts, unfortunately, a bit too much. He's going to be coming in with all of the goodies, including the Jade Griffin, giving him that regeneration. Now, rather interestingly, we don't have a net caster here, which is quite surprising considering my opponent's build. We want to net down to buy time for the handgunners, but he does have an Amber Wizard instead, coming in with Manticore Summon, hoping that the Manticore can kind of dish out the pain, as well as pin in a lot of my units. We do have a couple of years of Pistoliers. Pistoliers don't have the best AP, so you might be thinking, why would you bring them up against a faction with, like the Dino Boys, who have such scaly skin and real tough dinos? Well, that's because Pistoliers are here to counter Pterodon Riders. They counter them fantastically, keeping the back pocket of handgunners protected nice and tightly. With some Empire Knights on the right-hand side and some Empire Knights on the left, just cheap cavalry to charge in, bunch me down, and really buy time for the handgunners to dish out the pain. And that is the entire kind of point of this build. Voltmar kills the infantry, handgunners kill the big scary dinos. But of course, our dinos are currently hidden right now by the beautiful Beast of a Thousand Ducks flying high up in the sky. It looks like he's having a whale of a time right now. I don't even know what that was going on. He was doing a little roar to the sky. Unfortunately, Thunderous One has now been spotted, or likewise has Man's Mundi. so we're going to be splitting our dinosaurs up now into three separate directions. Quattle going after the cannons, the big Stegos aiming at those handgunners in the back. Now, you can see my opponent is going to drive forward with Volkmar the Grim, which you pull him back a little bit with the Red Cross of Skinks, just trying to get him as far away from the battlefield as possible. We're probably going to lose this unit, but hey, if it allows the rest of our army to really punch in and start beating through the enemy formation, I don't mind Volkmar killing one of our units. Master Mindy has hopped on top of some handgunners here. You can see the second unit has now been harassed by the Thunderous One as a chain lightning goes down on the other handgunner unit who was uh, being you know, harassed there by the Quattle, who at the same time is beating back the Great Cannon. I actually really do like Quattles. I think they're a very versatile uh, unit all round. 
and uh, you're going to see them quite a bit in competitive play, though they are a little bit uh, janky in some ways as well. So we have skin cohorts and requisite skinks who are wrapped around the flanks now on both sides, looking to get into the juicy pocket here of hand guys. It doesn't matter too much if we're a little late to the party with them, as long as they do indeed get on top of their targets. Now, my opponent's done a really good job. He's been focusing down the thunderous one all day, and uh, thunderous one's getting a danger low here, but luckily he's a chunky boy, and we have apotheosis galore. So apotheosis is going to come in from Mazdamundi, who's going to be switching positions now. Mazdamundi did a really good job on this left-hand flank. You can see the hand gunners are running for their lives. Great cannon's been shut down. So we're going to whittle round and uh, move the thunderous one round to this flank, and move Mazdamundi to the other one to assist in in the taking down of the hang gunners because we're so juicy HP wise. Quartal's done a good job. Looks like he's going after the Amber Wizard now. My opponent summoned a Ferromantical. We're simply going to net it in place and basically waste that summon, which is really good news for us. As uh, unfortunately, the hang gunners are just running for their lives. One unit gone, the other one looks to be breaking up relatively soon. Pistolers don't have the best AP, so I'm not too worried about them. But at the end of the day, they are going to slowly start to add up that damage value and make Mazdamundi feel the burn. Skin cohorts are laughing, clattering, and chattering to themselves as they jump on top of the hand gunners and beat back the halberdiers. Have a lovely play here by the Empire player. Coming in with his Empire Knights to slam into the rear there of the skin cohorts. But the skin cohorts aren't doing too shabby whatsoever. Once Empire Knights charge does wear down, they're not actually that great at dishing out the pain. Though it looks like they were being buffed up there by Volkmar, who is constantly being chased right now by the Thunderous One. Despite being down to 3,000 HP, he'll be more than happy to fight Volkmar. As I said before, Volkmar does not have the best melee defense stats, only 20, meaning the Stegalons, who hit really hard, are going to be hitting off them. Pistolers are trying to whittle down the Quattle, probably the best target for them because it only has 70 armor compared to you know the 130 of Mazda Mindy and uh, the big old HP as well of the Thunderous one. But the Quattle have just been a pain in the butt hunting down this great cannon crew and that is the aim of the game. We're simply chasing off units in all directions. Handguns are being chased wide here by the requisite skinks. Even if we don't catch them, it's forced them into a bad position where they can't really affect the battlefield and the Amber Wizard is now being surrounded as well by a mixture of requisite skinks and I believe Saurus Warriors. So we are slowly grinding out the front line. That does tend to happen when you have a couple of Saurus in the mist and the Quattle is on good cleanup duty here trying to just whip up and uh, destroy any of these units who are trying to rally it back into the main fight. Pistolers were a bit of a problem and you may be thinking, Ducky Boy, your build is decent but it does seriously lack any uh, counter skirmishing elements. Well, not actually true because Nev Amantor can simply come in and you then drop banishment on the skirmishers. Quattle is flying around and the Pistolers, yeah, they're basically gone. They're both terrified and actually been pinned in by the net now keeping them in the rather scary situation. Thunderous One gets another Apotheosis. He's going to heal up nicely there. Coming up to uh, just about 3,000 HPs, over 100 kills. Mazda Mundi not far behind is after a more juicy prey. Going for Volkmar the Grim, slamming into the flank of that chariot and sending Volkmar running. <laughs> he takes a massive hit there on the way back. Man, Mazda Mundi hits so hard. Really is still the best pick, I think, at least competitively for Lizardmen. Though it does, of course, depend on the matchup and uh, your play style and so forth. Quattle is hunting down the hand gunners. Once again, the uh, aim of the game here is just get the hand gunners off the field. Once the hand gunners are gone, there's simply nothing which can kill Master Mundi and the Thunderous One, particularly to go a bit. Even Master Mundi with his HP at the moment could kill the entirety of this Empire build if we get his range off the pitch. And it looks like his army is going to start to shatter there. Volkmar stands and fights alone. Pinned in by a net of Amantok means he's going absolutely nowhere. And it shall be a Pyrrhic victory for us and the mighty Dino Boys. Well played to Houseplant though, I don't think I've played him in a tournament before, we've definitely played on Quick Battles, very talented player and I actually think this is a little bit of a tough matchup for the Empire, so he did a really good job representing his clan there and uh, getting in some pretty decent damage across the board. Maybe if he had killed the Thunderous one early on, when he got it quite low HP wise, we could have been in big, big problems. But once again, well played to Houseplant, I actually like his build quite a bit, going very wide, very solid against Lizardmen, and you can kind of play this in two ways, you can do this style of play, or you can go with Mass Kite. Now, Kite would have been slightly better against my build, but it still has its own problems. One, it is insanely micro-intensive. But two, Net of Amantok punishes it so badly. You can Net of Amantok uh, handgunners, outriders, um, pistoliers, outriders with grenade launchers. Just net them. It's quite nice and simple. Drop banishment on them or a ruination. Then again, you can kite with war wagons as well, which does, of course, have its merits. But it's hard to kite something you can't see. Brought to you there by the Quartal advertisement team. 
So, uh, yeah, all around, really like a house plants build. I would definitely cut the Amber Wizard in order for a Light Wizard, and probably the Cannon as well, because if your opponent, who's a Lizman player, is going to go large dinosaurs, he's most likely going to bring a Quattle as well, just to shield them for approach, uh, because Quattles are very good at just disrupting and annoying the back line, though they don't get the best damage value. They're a good utility unit. So I'd cut the Great Cannon, add another unit of Handgunners instead, and uh, get a Light Caster for those nets. But apart from that, really love the build. Good top tier uh, build there. I like it a bit. As for our own build, yeah, it's just super competitive here. And uh, we'll delve into all that in just a second. Look at the damage dealt and damage value of all of these units in just a second. But if you guys enjoyed this video, make sure to leave a big fat juicy thumbs up. Feel free to subscribe as well for more glorious Total War Warhammer content coming to you in the uh, not so distant future. We drop a video every single day as well as some streams as well. I'm hopefully going to get... Uh, some other games going up on the channel as well. Maybe just once a week or something to mix it up and keep it nice and fresh for you guys. Feel free to comment down below what you thought of the builds, what you thought of the tournament so far, the Clan War Cup. We've actually uh, live streamed two group games so far on the channel. And we'll be doing more in the future when we know what uh, games are going to be on and all that good stuff. Or feel free to just yell quack. I really do appreciate all the comments. They do put a big old smile on my little rubbery face. And uh, yeah. It's always good to uh, chat with you guys and see what your opinions are on the content. The link's down below in the description to my Patreon if you'd like to support the channel. Likewise, the link's down below to my Discord. That is where you will be able to submit replays to the channel. I get a lot of emails. Uh, I don't accept um, replays via emails. It's all done in my Discord where it can be nice and uh, it all in one slot, basically. Uh, yeah, and that's all the good stuff. So back to the battlefield. And uh, once again, if you've made it this far in the video, you're an absolute legend and a very awesome damage value here on Lord Master Mindy. 94 kills, 14k damage dealt, over 3,000 damage value, and he had plenty to give. Not even down to half HP, still had plenty of wins of magic. I didn't actually use that much through the games. It was just nets and apotheosis. Um, so he just brings such good mobility to the battlefield in general. If your opponent has gone, you know, bad to the bones, Demigriff, Knights, Carl, Franz, old school Empire style of play. You got the Curse of Midnight Wind to help you get out of sticky situations, alongside those nets, banishments, and ruinations. Just such a good utility lord all round. The little skinkies are not the best damage value on them today, but hey, they serve their purpose. Wrap around the flanks, annoy the enemy, and harass him as much as possible. Volkmar can't be in all places at once, and that means you can chase down and round handgunners and other units. Requisite skinks did much better, despite the fact one of them was getting bullied really early on by Volkmar. Still, 600 damage value, 528 and 488 on the Regiment of Renown there. Saurus Warriors doing what Saurus Warriors do best. Kill, name, burn, destroy the weak. 860 damage value, 614 on this other unit. Getting a pretty decent damage across the board for them. The Quattle was very healthy in the late game, 1,085 damage value, 93 kills, just shy of 7,000 damage of... Uh Damage dealt there. Yeah, damage dealt. But hey, shut down the cannon early on, then started just shutting down handgunners, fulfilled its uh, win condition alongside the thunderous one, who likewise did great. 1,600 damage value isn't crazy at the end of the day, but 113 kills, helped route key targets, and absorbed so much damage, and yet had so much left to give at the end. Again, I had so much wins of magic to pop on this bad boy. For Houseplant, Volkmar the Grim, only 760 damage value. He did some good work initially, pushing him out aggressively. But then once he fell back, there was just Stegadons all over the place and nowhere really for him to call home. Maybe uh, if people do start bringing just like loads of Stegadons again, Karl Franz might become meta again. I could certainly see it as a possibility. Um, the problem is the wide Lizardmen force that you'd have to try to deal with, which Volkmar is so decent at. But Karl Franz would certainly slap up a Stegadon or two. And Wizard just got slaughtered, but he did have a nice amount of course. Some of them, unfortunately, got netted in place. And the Swordsman and the Spearman, obviously, just kind of getting dragged down. Likewise, the Halberds not being able to get too much value. As for the Handgunners, it was a real mixed bag. 200 damage value, just shy of 500, 729. You can see which ones actually hit the uh, dinosaurs of the longest. Empire Knights did okay. 580 damage value, 814. Pistol is getting shy of 500 damage value and just over 500. Not too many good targets for them today, but I do like bringing them as a counter to Pterodons if your opponent does bring them to Battlefield. Great Cannon, yeah, I, I would just cut a Great Cannon and get another unit of handgunners instead. They get off one or two small volleys and the Quattle just flies over and starts pooping on it. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. Until next time, peace, peace. And as always, stay awesome.